Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, The Importance of Temperance. I'm Katie, and I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're doing super well. I don't know about you guys, but I have been put through the ringer these past couple of weeks. I've been feeling a really low energy for some reason. I don't know. I just feel the energies are a bit oppressive and um, I can't shake this feeling of impending doom. <laughs> and to me, it's really weird because there's nothing that I need to be in fear of. Um, there's nothing that I'm lacking. I am totally blessed. I have manifested the life that I want to live. You know, I, I don't live in a lap of luxury, but I am able to um, live well, you know, and within reason, obviously, if I budget it, because I only work four days a week, and then I have three days off a week. That's a choice that I've made. Work-life balance, for me, it's important. Um, so, yeah, it's not that I live in a lap of luxury, and it's not that I'm a extravagant in any way, shape, or form. I do have everything I need. I have a job. I, I have, you know, the money that I need to, to, to eat and pay my rent. I live in a beautiful home. I live in a beautiful sunny state. I'm going to Italy. Um, albeit on a budget, but I'm still going. So I don't know what this sense of anxiety is. Now, I know that I could be tapping into the collective. I know that there's a lot of angst across the globe. I am an empath. I am sensitive. So I guess I'm picking up on this energy because I have no idea where it's coming from. And are you guys out there, are you feeling this like energy, whoo, this heaviness? Um, interestingly enough, today I got I got the four of cups, which kind of like tells me that, yeah, this despondency and this unhappiness and this angst that I might have, that I might feeling, I'm kind of like thinking, you know, what is it that I'm missing? You know, what is it that is not happening for me here? You know, and for the life of me, I cannot see whatever this blessing is. And even though I am grateful, don't get me wrong, I sort of, I'm focusing on these empty cups instead of seeing, oh my God, there is actually blessing here let me focus on that and interestingly enough uh, I pulled my weekly card even though it's a bit late to pull my weekly card but I pulled it today I was called to and what did I get I got the wisdom and this deck is the sacred destiny oracle from Den Denise Lynn and you know what this says which blows my mind and I have to actually read it to you because you know so the sacred landscape wants you to know things are not as they seem look beneath the surface in your life for example, you might feel that you aren't making progress on a particular project, yet beneath the surface, things are happening, or you might be going through a stormy cycle. This card is letting you know that even though the surface of your life might be a bit rocky or wobbly, in a deeper place, all is well and serenity and peace are emerging. Things that may seem challenging will later be revealed to have been beneficial. So this is everything. This is everything that I'm feeling. I'm feeling all this unstableness, this something, 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 which I can't put my finger on. And, and yet, and yet, there is this blessing and I, I don't know. Anyway, rant over. I just thought I'd share that with you quickly, um, just because their mother feels and I was just wondering if I'm tapping into the collective and other people have been feeling them feels. Now, I've got myself a cup of green tea here and um, we're here to talk about this Yasin Guselev or Guselev um, Tarot. This was the deck I was talking about in my previous video and I really must apologize for all these noises because they've decided to all come past now that I'm filming. I'm filming outside on my ground and this is why you see this dappled light as well beautiful sunny day in Queensland today um so this deck I was umming and ahhing about why because it's only um the major so it's only the trumps um but I was absolutely stunned by the artwork I was perusing Amazon in the search for something interesting because every now and I go and go into these modes that I need to buy tarot cards and then you know, I can't find anything that I'm interested in, and then the ones that I am interested in, then I can't afford, so la 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 la. Anyhow, long story short, I saw this deck. And as I said in my previous video, it was in my cart, I'm going to about it, da da da. And then when 
I decided to get the Grim Way Tarot, I thought, I'll oh, bugger it, I'll just get it. And um, so I have. And I got it on Monday, and I was going to film it when I got home from work. I was all excited, but as I said, my energy level just, I have had no energy. So today I'm finally like up for doing this vid and sharing a bit about what's happening in my tarot world and do a walkthrough of this uh, well, tarot. Well, it's just the major arcana. And um, I just find the artwork stunning. It's absolutely like their drawings, hand drawings, and um, just wow. Now, the only thing about this deck is I, it's it's kind of like cast off isn't amazing. Um, it's just very kind of like normal, not interesting car stock. And for a deck from Los Bell, it's a bit disappointing. And also, they previously did a special edition of this deck on beautiful linen paper or linen cardstock. And when you actually have a look really up close, you can see that there's that kind of like um, linen y uh, look to it. But the, this cardstock isn't. So, what I feel they have done is like photocopied them. And then just reprinted them on just normal cardstock for this deck. It is a Los Carabel deck. It comes in this two-part box. And um, Yasin Guzlev or Guzlev, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm sorry, Yasin, if I am butchering your name. He is an illustrator. I'll read a little blurb from here. Yasin Guzlev or Guzlev is a Bulgarian illustrator and artist with a diverse portfolio. From classic picture books like Pinocchio and Alice in Wonderland to The Legend of King Arthur and King of the Golden River. Aside from illustrating the classics, Guzlev, or Guzlev produced numerous other artistic works from the covers of Vanity Fair and Italian Vogue to Tarot of the Third Millennium. This deck was previously released in a full 78 card deck with the name Tarot of the Third Millennium and this original deck is long out of print. And so the current edition with only the major arcana has been created to highlight the artistic beauty of his drawings. Now apparently this a Tarot of the Third Millennium is a really super weird deck with a bit of a mishmash of things. I went looking for it because I'd be really interested to have it. I like something of interest me, but you can't find it. And if obviously if you want to buy it, it's probably like so expensive. So he goes on to say here, the major arcana represent focal points of existence during divining. In a cartomantic spread, they indicate great spiritual forces at work or a moment of particular importance or in the clearance life. The major arcana are simple and bare in this tarot with a cold and distant beauty. Their presence imposes calm and meditation on what occurs through humility because the world is larger than our ego and I don't know why all the buses in the world have to go past when I am reading <laughs> so uh, when you go through the booklet um, it only kind of gives you a little bit of a blurb and I've gone through them and what I should have done is actually translated them myself because when I read the Italian version I come back to read the English version they've translated directly into the English and it's not but it gets lost in translation. This is what I'm trying to say. Another interesting thing about this deck, it wants to have um, the symbols of uh, sacred geometry. And that runs up to kind of like the 10. And then from the 10 to the end, it has a, a mix of uh, the astrology symbols. And, you know, like they might associate it with a planet um, or any kind of other symbol that they've come up with and also they've got the Hebrew lettering on the side so the association with the Hebrew alphabet now this I've seen done obviously in the Thoth deck, Toth deck, Tahuti deck whatever you want to call it there is the symbol of uh, the alphabet down the bottom on most of them now the interesting thing is that it's not the same associations you know, these associations also kind of indicate things with a high priestess, for instance. This is Gimel, and that means um, camel, and then there is a camel. And there is a significance to why this letter of the alphabet and this image is linked into the card. So it's interesting to see this system is a little bit different from how they've done it here. Because I, I got out my book of thoughts. 
to go through this with you. Yeah, because he has, um, he being Crowley or Crawley, gave each a letter kind of like a, an association and a little blurb about it. And also I kind of wrote the association of these letters um, to what they represent in the card. But then I went through this and it's not the same. So, sorry guys, I was going to like share that with you, but maybe we can do that in another video when I'm going to talk about my Thoth deck. Thoth deck. Tahuti deck, whatever you want to call it. So, another thing that I noticed is there is a correlation. The inspiration of this deck, it's more from Tarot de Masse, not from the Rider Waite Smith system. And so I thought it'd be interesting to compare them. They are a thing of beauty, these cards. Like, his drawings are just amazing. So that's you have the fool here so you can kind of see the dog down the bottom you know and then you've got his two his two sticks his two wands his two walking well his walking stick here and then the little stick that he has to tie his little bundle on of worldly goods now here this is sheen i think that's what that's called and then this is the circle so in sacred geometry, obviously the circle, the sphere is uh, represents life, the circle of life, the all and the nothing. And so we start off, this is infinite potential. He is everything, he is nothing. So we start off the journey with this infinite potential that is the full, right? And he moves forward. But, you know, if, if we have infinite potential and we don't have somewhere to focalize it or you know to bring it into manifestation it's that that's what it just is it's infinite potential without being realized potential and so then when we move on to the to the magician as we can see in the magician there is that dot within the circle now this also yes is a representation of the sun but for the purpose of this um deck that represents the point so we have a point now so with the magician coming forward from infinite potential, we have a start. And look at this magician, and isn't he beautiful? I mean, the drawing is just stunning. And so if we move on to the magician here, we can see, see how his hat has he's got the lemon skate here, and this hat is representing lemon skate as well. He's got his little magic wand and then he's got all the kind of like his um, tools on his little bench. And again, you see the three legs of the bench, not four. And the same here, you have a three leg of his bench, not four. So I think with the Tarot de Marseille, as far as my understanding is, it's a continuation of progression through. And what's missing in this card, you need to look for in the next card. So in the Papess you will find the third leg, if that makes kind of sense. But yeah, beautiful. So from our initial point, now we go in to the Popes. Isn't she beautiful? Now she's got these keys in her hand, which are interesting, right? Because usually the keys are the Hierophant kind of symbolism. See how she's got that crescent moon on her, that's a tiara, the Pope's tiara. And... You know, I love the way the fabric just kind of like spills across. So as you can see here, oops, if I can get it into focus, it's not a complete circle. It's an arc. So what does that mean? That means it's two points. So to actually create something, we go from one point to two points, but we haven't got anything concrete. We've only got two points and we've only got one point. So... This is just an arc. So if we want to produce something or manifest something, something real, we have to like from the dot, from the magician, from the dot to the magician to these, if we draw two lines, okay, then we get the triangle. We get the part of the pie. So we've manifested, created something. And so in sacred geometry, that is the trinity. And, and we've created, manifested in the real world from nothing, from infinite potential to a starting point. Then we've got a second point. 
and now with a starting point and a second point by putting them together we can actually create something real tangent like a symbol that can actually something in itself so that's super interesting to me how he's um done that but do we want to talk about this purpose and I mean, there's also diversity in here. Do you know what I mean? Like, amazing. So this is our purpose here. And it's very similar. And it's interesting how the crescent moon is used. And to me, that's very symbolic of this arc here. So we've got kind of all the draperies and stuff. The only thing that's missing here is the egg. Now she has an egg here in traditional tarot, well, the tarot from way back when, which signifies that she is, you know, incubating the egg of this fertilization, of this coming together with the magician into the real world. Beautiful. But see how they're facing different ways? So it's interesting because in Marseille, obviously, the direction that, that, that the characters are facing is very important. And for some reason, this has been inverted um, in this deck. So I don't really understand, and I've also seen that in the um, Rider White Smith, to distinguish themselves, the personages um, face the other world, which is interesting because you want to go towards the east because you want to go towards beginnings. You don't want to go towards the west because when you go towards the west, you're looking backwards. And the whole idea is that you need to look forward to going to fertilize this egg because this is what this is. This is the egg of life, which is our soul that needs to be fertilized because an egg that's not fertilized cannot create life, right? And he, the fool, is infinite potential. He's everything and nothing, but this infinite potential that can be everything and nothing can't be anything, can't manifest itself if, it, if it's not, you know, focal, focalized or in, put on a road where it can be, um, actualized and um, so it just dissipates and this this egg doesn't get fertilized so nothing happens and this is what the journey is all about and this is why these guys are facing each other because he's going towards her and she's looking back at him because they're waiting to come together to create this potential and and fertilize the egg and create what needs to be created in the journey of all of us so that's kind of the idea behind the Tarot of the Marseille. And, and this is based on Eurodoski's kind of theory as well. So, yeah, very interesting to me, where as opposed to here, all the characters are kind of looking, they're looking away from each other. Interesting, isn't it? Well, it's, at least to me, <laughs> to me it's fascinating. <laughs> All right. So, again, this is our beautiful Empress. I love the way she is just looking straight at us. Usually she faces away or she's put to the side. She has all the trimming. I love this Empress because she's powerful. And this is what I love about the Empress of the Tarot Demo say as well. They are powerful women. Instead of being represented as, you know, just the mother figure, she's not just the mother figure. She, she's the empress, like, of all living things, of matter. She's just not a mother, you know, and sometimes they, they depict these empress without giving her the power she deserves. Ah, oh, I just love this empress. And there's the shield. And, um, and this is her, her wand of power so to speak, her scepter, and it comes from her womb. So her power comes from within. It's gorgeous. And she obviously is a triangle because she is now what has materialized. She's been created. A child that has been created from the magician and the high priestess. Then we come into the emperor. Look at this emperor. Wow, I love the emperor, and he's sitting on his um, cube or or his rectangle, which is like represents Earth, and then see how his scepter of power it's it's touching the Earth, so his power comes from without, and the symbol here is the triangle and a plus. Now that plus signifies earth so that signifies the rectangle or the um the square right now it's underneath the triangle and what does that represent 
it represents that the triangle has now solidified into the matter or the earth, right? Because it's a triangle plus. It is also the symbol of air, sulfur. It is also the symbol of fire and earth. Um, so it is also a symbol of the mind and of willpower. It's so interesting how everything comes together. Again, if we want to compare them, you know, the shield is there and um, his scepter is on the outside because his, his power comes from the outside, not the inside. And again, if you notice, it's four, right? It's not the one V, the Roman numeral would all it would be one V, right? For four. What that means is in this in the tarot, in the tarot dome, I say it's a continuation. So it's not a subtraction. Because just so you take five and you take one away from five, it's four. Whereas here it's progressive. So what this indicates to us, it's a progression going forward. We're not going backwards, we're going forwards, babes. We're going forwards. And look at this hierophant. Oh my goodness me. I love this Hierophant. I love the fact that he's facing the other side and we're seeing the church. We're seeing the two columns here. We're seeing, you know, this doorway. It could, it could also be like a lock, right? And, and what I'm thinking is, are these keys from the Papess to unlock this door? You know, and the sign here obviously is a pentagram because, you know, sacred geometry, where you go from like the square or the rectangle. And now we are wanting to sort of come out of that earthiness. We want to grow. We want to sort of link to the divine. And so we're breaking out and sort of this represents that breaking away out of matter. So beautiful. And I love the way that his two fingers, right, still represent those two fingers there of the blessings. And the two supplicants are down here. How clever is it? I mean, these drawings are amazing. Then we come to our lovers, or the lover, and he's been pierced here. How beautiful is that? Now we've got the six pointed star and what that is, that is the union of fire and water. So the symbol of fire and water coming together is the symbol of our um, lovers, the uniting of the two plus and the minus, the feminine and the masculine coming together to create the all kind of thing, love. And here he's just he's removed the two people he's just had this this lonely figure here the lover he's talking directly to cupid and cupid's here as well and i'll just read you a bit a bit of the blurb from the book to give you an idea it says my heart beats for you do not leave me because you need to be loved too and this card is about feelings well that's what it says here but it does have kind of this little blurb for all of them which I find very interesting. So in the Italian, it's a little bit different. It makes more sense in the translation in the in the English. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is the chariot. Look at this. So interesting. I love the way they've depicted his um on the on the chariot facing us, looking at us. Um so you don't see the horses. The horses are going that way. He's looking at he's looking at us too, but but we see the horses now. What's interesting about the Tarot de Massé also is that n there's most things are symmetrical, but then there's things that are not symmetrical. And the reason for that is that uh, perfection is imperfection. Okay, so if if things are asymmetrical, they're the work of God. When they're perfectly symmetrical and everything is symmetry, then that's the work of the devil. So if we have a look, you know, there are certain things that vary, right? You, you Here you see kind of, you see one wheel, but you don't see the other wheel as perfectly symmetrical to the other, okay? So here what we see is everything's perfectly symmetrical, but what we see is one of his legs is backwards and one of his legs is forward, and then he's got this that kind of breaks 
his rod, his staff, and that breaks kind of the symmetry of the whole picture. Fascinating, isn't it? Beautiful. Then we have our justice. Look how beautiful our justice is. Oh, sorry, and I didn't say. So here, practically, what the seven is represented is from the cube and the triangle. So from Earth, right, what's being created and the triangle. Now we want to sort of branch out. So we want to expand. We want to become something new. And the way I can represent it also is in the way that the Marseille pip, the seven, is depicted, which you have the four, which is your base. And then you have your three, right? You're breaking free. You're going somewhere new. You're, you're coming out of the mold um, because otherwise there won't be growth. So this is kind of like, see how the triangle is, is inverted here? It's not going up, it's going down. And so this is what that kind of represents to the square with a triangle. So justice. And again, in Marseille, uh, the colours are very important. So, and, and purple is one of the most rare colours in, in the Tarot de Marseille. And apparently, this cushion that she sort of sits back on is purple, um, which is very interesting. So, I don't know, this doesn't denote it, but this bit here, this is purple. Um, but yeah, just look at this. Amazing. And again, the symmetry is here. It's it's all symmetry except for this cushion coming out on that side and also the fact that her hand is touching the sword as well. So she's not like with, she doesn't have both hands holding it. Also, this is the sum, the double cube, right? So the double cube, eight, eight, um, so four and four, uh, stability on a massive level, but also it reminds me of infinity because this symbol, the number eight is infinity and it's perfection as well. But perfection in the sense of creation is perfect. And if we go with the flow of life, then we too are trying to achieve that excellence as humans. Because for us, perfection doesn't exist. Perfection is only the work of the devil because it's only illusion. <laughs> this is becoming too um, in depth, isn't it really? becoming a tarot study instead of a walkthrough. All right, so I better speed this up a bit because, you know, like, it's been going forever, my friends. So I've brought the camera down a little bit more so we can see. I've also um, didn't show you the backs. These backs are kind of like a map of the stars. They're beautiful. So this hermit is quite um, an interesting hermit, isn't he? Kind of reminds me of the Ashetics. I don't know how to pronounce that name. The Indian ones that go into the forest, you know, like they do the yoga and they become hermits. And he's meditating on the tree there. He's got his little thyme thingy and his lantern. Oh my God, I can't speak thyme thingy. And then he's got this symbol here, which I've been trying to find and I don't really understand how that represents an iron. So in sacred geometry, it would actually be the Merk above because it'd be like the three triangles all together to give you the nine. So I'm not entirely sure what that symbol there represents. So if any of you guys know, let me know because I don't know. Could it be like a square, three squared, but it doesn't make sense. Anyway, that's our hermit. Takes from but not very similar to our hermit in our Marseille. All right, so I'm just going to speed it up now guys because yeah <laughs> i've waffled on look at our beautiful beautiful um wheel of fortune i mean the detail is incredible and her symbol is the the short sticker which represents the spinning wheel of time amazing just amazing details amazing Strength, which is in Marseille, is the 11. Uh, 
and this here is represented by a six-pointed star and it has another six-pointed star within it. See how his eye comes through here? It's kind of like res representation of like the Mesopotamian Just the drawings are amazing. Now Hangman. Now Hangman has a little bit of a more modern take. Like, you know, the trees or the pillars here are represented by these two old world figures. And then our guy here is a man with a bowler hat and his umbrella. And the symbol for, for Hangman is water. But we've got the symbol, the plus on the top, representing earth at the top with the symbol of water going downwards which is also the sign obviously of sulfur but inverted very interesting I like how the expression of those big eyes stay the same see how his big eyes stay the same death oh this death. <gasps> so, so awesome. See, and with this, you can actually see that it looks like it's on linen stock. So it, but it's not. And his symbol is Saturn. The symbol of the planet, the symbol of Saturn. And that's because that kind of represents the sire. And also because Saturn is the god of time. And often death with his sigh is represented by time. Just, wow. Oh, sorry, didn't compare that. But yeah, so that's kind of t the take on it. Just that our one here is caped and the death in the Massé is not... And then we have temperance. I'm a bit partial to the temperance card, to be honest. But this temperance. <gasps> and we've got the symbol of Aquarius here. The water bearer. But how gorgeous is she? See, we've got a representation of kind of different cultures as well. And different traditions throughout these cards, which I really rather enjoy. That's our traditional temperance. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> oh, how cool is our devil? Look at his face. Look, he's got a little badge of honor pinned to him with a safety pin. The representation of the actual is the pentagram inverted, but it just really looks like the devil's head, doesn't it? He has Mercury, which is very interesting to me, on his belt here. Representation of um, Quicksilver in, in alchemy. Quicksilver is uh, Mercury um, is feminine. So we're giving the representation of this being maybe... You know, a being of different sexes or all sexes or a mastodite or whatever you want to call him. And then you've got your two little masks representing the two prisoners or supplicants at his feet. <laughs> and this is our traditional devil here. Oh, this tower. Look at this tower. So this is a symbology for Mars. But look, isn't this so interesting? These are all different temples of different time periods and they're all built on top of each other until we get to nowadays, which is obviously incomplete at the moment, but, you know, meaning that our history uh, goes back that we build on the ruins of <laughs> other cultures. That's kind of the idea. So we kind of go and um, conquer 
destroy and then build on the foundations of other civilizations. And that's our tower here, our traditional tower. This is the star. Now the star, this is kind of the, the representation of the constellations, which is kind of like the continuation. It's kind of like on, on these backs, you have the whole circle, whereas you just have the half a circle here, but isn't this beautiful? And she's represented here by the eight pointed star or the star of Ishtar. And I love the little duckies. <laughs> Beautiful, and this is um, our classic star. Now, the moon. Wow, so I'm not entirely sure what that symbol represents here, but I'm guessing this is water with the crescent moon on top. Um, and water being the symbol for the feminine or the female. It's got a little crab down here. It's got the dogs. And she's kind of naked underneath this kind of transparent looking kimono. She's giving me sort of like Chinese, Egyptian vibes, but more Chinese because that's the fan. And then, but see how... See how the face in the moon here? Just absolutely stunning. And then you've got the sun. <laughs> the sun. And the symbol for the sun is Gemini. So you've got the twins here that picks up on there. You've got the circle, the perfect circle. Here, but I just want to read you what the book says because that is um, really telling. I traced the perfect circle with my finger. I had it in me all along. The truth. Saying like we, we always look for things outside for perfection outside. But when it truly is within us. The son of God. Beautiful. And then we have the judgment card which is very similar with our supplicants down the bottom there. Again, supplicants. They've risen from their grave. They've been called. And um, beautiful. And also there's all this kind of like, I love the way it comes out of the drawing and also the symbology with the two picks up on the symbology from the Hierophant. And see, this is... The symbol for Jesus Christ, it's the I and the X um, from the Greek alphabet. And last but not least, we have our universe or the world card. Now the world card has got on the hat all different buildings from all different variety of cultures all coming together she carries the world on her hat and then she has a sphere she looks like she's pregnant here but then when you look at it it's kind of like a separate sphere there and she's got this beautiful you know piece of um, cloth wrapping around her But again, she's looking the other way instead of looking that way. And the cross, obviously this is the symbol of earth. The four corners of the earth, you know, four seasons, four elements. Hmm. There you go. So thank you for hanging in there to the end with me. It's been a bit of a long one. I didn't realize I um, spent so much time on the first section of this. And um, yeah, I, I hope that you enjoyed these beautiful, beautiful cards as much as I have and that you kind of enjoyed the comparison with the Marseille. Beautiful, absolutely stunning cards. And I'm, I'm glad they're in my collection. 
the only thing is obviously the car stock isn't fantastic it's not kind of like your standard Boscata bear or it feels a little bit cheaper than that and so I might kind of edge them in black to just give them a little bit more oomph or maybe in that grey that I edged my other deck in that might be nice all right thank you so much for hanging out with me thank you everyone who has subscribed to my channel i'm really enjoying the fact that my subscriptions are going up and if you like this content and you want to see more of it and you want to hang out with me please like give us a like because it's really important if you give me a like then i can be seen by other people as well if no one takes any notice of me then my channel isn't noticed <laughs> that's why likes are so important i know it's so super annoying everyone says oh can you give me a like and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell well, the only reason is that if you do that, or at least do a comment or, 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 or like someone's content, then you're actually putting them on the board. And, and that means that with the algorithm, that video gets to more people. If that makes sense. That's the only reason. Um, otherwise, I don't want to annoy you at all. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Okay, I'm going. I'm shutting up now. Bye, everyone. Have a great one.